On today's episode of Hackbyte, we're going to create a $15 word driving rig to track and log Wi-Fi devices with the ESP8266. Word driving is a Wi-Fi reconnaissance technique that allows us to combine Wi-Fi data with specific GPS coordinates while moving past a target in a car. This geolocation data can be pretty useful in scenarios where we want to detect where specific networks are located, or if we want to see, for instance, every time a specific unsecured network was detected. While getting started with word driving can usually be pretty complicated or expensive to set up, since you'll need something like a laptop, GPS module, and Wi-Fi dongle, I'm going to show you how you can get started with the ESP8266 in order to create your own word driving rig for under $15. To follow along, you're going to need an ESP8266, an SD card module for the D1 Mini, a micro SD card, GPS module with respective antenna, a small breadboard, and also a couple breadboard wires. The D1 Mini form factor for the ESP8266 that we're using today is a super modular platform that allows us to basically stack hardware modules directly on top of each other, allowing us to use components like this micro SD card reader without having to do any additional wiring. Taking a look at the pinout for the micro SD card reader, you can confirm that the pins are pre-routed to the ESP8266 in order to avoid conflicts if you choose to wire up any other components. Since we only need to hook up the GPS module at this point, we can just hook up VCC to 5 volts and ground respectively to their pins on the ESP8266, and also route the remaining TX pin to D4 and RX to D3 on the D1 Mini since they're not currently used by the SD card module. This compact finished form factor includes all the basic components that we'll need to get started with war driving, although this project also does support other attachments like a screen and portable battery power, which I'm gonna cover in future videos. Now that we have all of our hardware assembled, the next step is to upload the code to our microcontroller so that way we can start doing the war driving demonstration. You can find all of the code used in this video over on my GitHub at github.com slash alexlin slash ESP8266 wardriving, where I'm also going to be uploading a pre-compiled binary for this code demonstration, and also further documentation and resources, so that way you can get this project up and running. So I'm going to start by copying this URL and opening up a new tab in my terminal, where I'm going to clone this repository to my computer. I can do this by typing git clone and the URL of the GitHub repository, which is https github.com slash alexlin slash esp8266 wardriving. So now heading over to my files, I can just open up the repository we just downloaded and navigate over into the esp8266 wardriving folder. So we're going to be taking a look at the basic wardriving demonstration today, which I can find under this wardriving folder. And I'm going to go ahead and open up this Arduino sketch, which will contain everything to interface the ESP8266 with a few different hardware modules, including the SD card module, GPS, and also an optional screen. If you haven't worked with the ESP8266 before, getting it configured to work with the Arduino IDE is pretty simple. First, you can go ahead and copy this JSON configuration link, which I'll paste in the video description below. Head back over to your Arduino IDE and go to Preferences, which you can find under the File tab. Under Additional Board Manager URLs, you can just paste the link referencing the ESP8266 package, hit OK, and then navigate over to Tools to install the proper board definitions. So under Tools, go to Boards, Board Manager, and search for ESP8266 in order to install the package that's going to contain the ESP8266 board definitions, such as the D1 mini form factor, which we're going to be using today. Once you have this installed, everything should be ready, and you should be able to use the ESP8266 in your Arduino IDE. So taking a look at the basic code structure here, you can see that we interface with a few of these modules, for instance, the optional screen which is pretty useful in place of having to plug in your ESP8266 to your computer and getting a readout over the serial monitor. So this is also completely optional if you wanna do a little bit more wiring. And of course, I'm gonna provide the documentation on my GitHub, so that way, if you want to include this, you'll have the resources to do so. Scrolling down, you can also see we have some other things to interface with the GPS module and the SD card module, as well as some of the data that's logged out to the SD card such as Wi-Fi encryption and a whole bunch of other Wi-Fi data, as well as specific geolocation data that allows us to track and log where specific Wi-Fi devices were seen at. Looking at the main loop that's running our code, it should basically log data entries for every single time a specific Wi-Fi device or network was spotted, and also add a timestamp as well as geolocation data, so that way we have multiple data entries that we can later use to do something like detect every single place a specific network was seen at. 
Now, before we start uploading this code to the ESP8266, it's important to make sure that you have a few prerequisite libraries installed. So in order to do that, we can head over to Sketch and navigate to Include Library, so that way we can install a couple of libraries that are necessary to run this code. So clicking on Manage Libraries, the first one that you're going to want to make sure you have installed is the Tiny GPS++ library. You can search for this just by typing Tiny GPS Plus and installing this library that's going to allow us to gather the critical GPS and geolocation data that we're going to need in order to get our war demand grid running. Now, in order to timestamp the data that we've collected, you're also going to need to install the time library, which you can find just by searching for time lib and installing this first library here that pops up. Once you have these things installed, we can go ahead and start uploading the code to our microcontroller. Now, heading over to Tools, make sure that you have the same profile setup that I have here. And for this demonstration, the board that we're going to be using specifically is the Lawlin Wemos D1 Mini, which you can find under the ESP8266 board configuration. So after you have everything set up the same way I do here, you're also going to want to make sure that your port is selected to the correct one that your device is plugged in on, and you should be good to go. So navigating over to the top left corner, you can just select the upload button and the code is ready to upload to your ESP8266. Once the code finishes uploading, you can plug in a fat formatted SD card, power up your war driving rig with either a battery or USB power source, and it's ready to start war driving. In a previous episode, I showed you how you can get started with parsing war driving data through Jupyter Notebook, and the file format outputted by this war driving rig is completely compatible with this demonstration. So if you want to see an application of this project, make sure you check out that video where you can see how war driving data captured by the ESP8266 can be utilized to log the location of Wi-Fi devices around you. Taking a quick look at the log file captured on our micro SD card, you can see that the ESP8266 war driving rig created this log0.csv file, which is a pretty standard comma separated value file that contains a whole bunch of data entry points showing us both the Wi-Fi networks and devices that we spotted, as well as the geolocation data, timestamp that the device was seen at, as well as some other metadata that allows us to identify certain attributes about the devices that we spotted. This gives us some pretty good insight to Wi-Fi data that we captured around us, which we can later interface with through a program like Python in order to get a better gauge of certain Wi-Fi anomalies or patterns around us that we want to look out for. The D1 Mini form factor is the perfect platform to get started with for Wi-Fi integrated prototyping, and as you saw in today's demonstration, we had to do pretty minimal wiring to get it up and running. In upcoming episodes, I'm going to show you some practical applications of how war driving can be used in real life, and specifically how we can use this ESP8266 rig in order to do something like detect if someone's stalking you by looking for the presence of their cell phone over Wi-Fi. If you're interested in seeing this video or you have other suggestions for things you want to see covered on this channel, let me know in the comments below or feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Alex Lind. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.